in my heart, really and truly, I, I started kiteboarding because I wanted to fly. One of the first memories of my ever feeling like I wanted to kite was when I first managed to get on the board. And I was so stoked I was on the board that I kited really far out. I went past the reef, I went really to like the really blue water. And I remember sitting down, I had no idea how to turn around and go back the other way. But I remember being out there and being like, wow, it's so nice out here. Like it's really peaceful. Still now when I kite and I have, you know, whatever, troubles on the beach, troubles in my life, I find that kiting out to sea and sort of leaving everything behind is like that one thing that really got me about kiteboarding. Very into PlayStation before I started kiteboarding. I actually never did any other sports. I think I kind of just stumbled into the whole thing at the beginning, really. Um, like I said, I did my first competition not really knowing my level, not really expecting to even make it past the first round. And, you know, further down the line, I find myself head to head with the world champion in the final. And that was when I was like, whoa, well, okay, you know. And um, from there, things kind of snowballed. Hi, my name is Susie Mai. I'm a professional kiteboarder, and I came out here to the Maldives because we wanted to try and have me jump over this big, huge bungalow behind me. So I'm going to be going this way. Or if you just tell us what you start playing around. definitely doable but unfortunately we didn't get enough wind to try it and it's pretty frustrating because it would have been one of the coolest things ever. If I'd been able to do it really a constant waiting game and it's like a dance back and forth with the wind you're always waiting for it and then suddenly out of nowhere leaves start to rustle and there it is you know no warning I mean it's a force of nature and I'm pretty used to having to sit on the beach and wait it out so I guess it's not unusual it's just very frustrating when you come all the way out somewhere and you you can almost see it in your mind, but you just don't have the tools to do it. But it doesn't matter, because tomorrow we're flying out to Sri Lanka, where I have like a little workshop with some of the local people, some of the kiteboarders in the scene, and going to fly. We came out to Sri Lanka because there's, um, apparently there's a pretty big local kite scene, and so we decided to do a little kite day with Susie and do a couple of workshops on the beach. Um, the first workshop we did was with the girls and it, I think it went really well. There were actually a lot of girls, which was pretty cool. You all get together, especially when it's girls. You gotta stick together, right? I've been trying really hard to push the female side of kiteboarding too, because I think there's huge potential there. And uh, it's just something about girls that we just make the the sport look graceful we make it look elegant we make you know something that looks really hardcore when a big muscly guy is doing it we make it look nice you know and I've really been trying to motivate the girls I in order to get girls to do something I think it's all about making them realize that they can Something else we did uh, was I spoke to some of the local kids. There are actually two local kids that are killing it on the kites. So it was pretty awesome to talk to them and ask them what they're thinking of doing. I think one of them wants to do the Kite Tour Asia next year. So um, wish him luck for that. And it was pretty cool to see them because uh, more and more spots are bringing forth local talent. And it's, uh, it's kind of cool when you're there 
and you've seen it and you're like, oh yeah, I knew about that guy, you know, and then a few years down the line he's amazing and super famous. The scene, the scene out here in Sri Lanka is pretty relaxed, I'd say. The people are very chilled out and they love kiting. They will go through great lengths just to be able to kite every day. They kind of camp out in these ghetto <laughs> sort of places and um, you know they're quite happy just to eat, sleep and ride. Mm -hmm.